Good morning. Welcome to worship today. I only have one announcement for us, and I'm sure you all can probably tell me what it already is. Just hang around after service during the prelude. Have a seat. We're going right into the special congregational meeting. So it, it's minimal turnover to get that started, and we'll get down to donuts as soon as we can. <laughs> with that, I invite you to stand as we begin our service this morning with confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we continue on with the reading of the gospel, or the reading of the word. The first reading this morning is from Joshua, chapter 24. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore revere the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. The psalm this morning is from Psalm 34. Please read responsively with me. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and God's ears are open to their cry. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from every one. Evil will bring death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The second reading this morning is from Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish, wish to go? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. I was in a store where the clerk was talking to a woman who came in to have a key cut. She already had been in multiple times to have keys made that she would then take to try at home. But she was back to the store for the fourth time without successfully getting a new key to open her door. This time, the clerk told her that he was stumped. There was nothing he could do to make the key fit her door. And the woman replied, Oh, well, the original master key didn't work on the door either. I was a little shocked as I stood and listened to this exchange. But I know that I have these days, when no matter what I try or how I try it, and against all logic, the key just doesn't seem to fit. This has happened to me when I have been looking at this continual reading that we've had from the Gospel of John. We have heard over and over again for the last four weeks that Jesus is the bread of life. I know that. You know that. And this is one of the many mantras that we repeat when we're asked who Jesus is. But it still sounds odd. It just doesn't make sense. And have you ever really tried to explain this statement to someone who does not believe? What do you do when Jesus' words don't make sense to you? Do you get angry? Do you feel defensive or stupid? Can you explain them away? Or do you just simply ignore them? How do you reconcile Jesus' words when you don't understand them? In today's gospel, we learn how. After listening to Jesus' teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum, many of his disciples found Jesus' words difficult to understand. In fact, they found them so difficult to comprehend that they could no longer be Jesus' disciples. Jesus was teaching them about what we know as the sacrament of Holy Communion, of eating and drinking the flesh and blood. For many, this was going too far. How could they, being faithful Jews, whom, to whom blood was one of the greatest offenses to their purity laws, participate in what Jesus was asking of them. Such a teaching went beyond their sound reasoning and common understanding. And these disciples found themselves at a crossroad. Do you take Jesus' teaching literally as a practice of cannibalism? 
Or do they understand Jesus' teaching as a way of living in relationship with God as, as God's son, who would open the doors to the Father so that he could be their true master key and open the door into the Father's kingdom? Jesus says a lot of things that stun and confuse us, and even to the point of making us squirm. Besides the ones in this chapter, what about Jesus' statement of anyone who loves his mother or father more than me is not worthy of me? Or love your enemies? Or do not judge and you will not be judged? Do not condemn and you will not be condemned? Or even take up your cross and follow me? So I ask again, what do we do when Jesus' words make us uncomfortable? First, we need to remember that this is not just about us individually. We do not live alone in the kingdom of God. We are created to be members of the body of Christ. We are called to be here as children of God and workers together in God's kingdom. And we state this to each newly baptized member as we welcome them into the church. We are not alone when it comes to living our faith. So how do we live together when the people sitting next to us take a different approach to their understanding of Jesus' teachings? How do we live together when our enemies, maybe our neighbor's friends, is it then that we find ourselves in the same place as the disciples gathered around Jesus, as he declares that he is the bread of life? It is here that we find ourselves at a crossroad, and Jesus asks us, just as he did the twelve, do you wish to go away? This question is not about agreeing with each other, or even Jesus. This question is about faith, our faith in the one who asks it. And faith is a trust in the unknown and the unseen. It is a trust in the unexplainable and incomprehensible. Jesus is asking if we have enough faith in him to stick around even when we are uncomfortable and just don't seem to get it. As we look back to this gospel reading, I can't imagine Jesus' words made much sense to those 12 disciples, especially without the established teachings of Holy Communion that we lean on. And because of that, many followers couldn't accept what Jesus was teaching, and they stepped away. Yet the ones who knew Jesus best who lived with him, who learned from him, who placed their lives in his hands, had come to know the truth. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, Peter confessed. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. They realized that some things trump human understanding and that they can live, really live, with that. Faith is not about human understanding. Faith is not about our ability to make sense and the pieces and to try to make them fit together so that we can be comfortable. Faith is a gift from God, a gift that is beyond our control, yet a gift that we can choose to lean on and that will support us when reason and understanding fail. And it is faith that allows us to confess, just as Peter did. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Amen.
sharing together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Creator God, we and all creation are sustained by your word. We bless you for the beauty of the world you surround us with. Send favorable weather and gentle rains. Bless those who labor to feed your many and diverse people. Thank you for sufficient food to eat and clean water to drink. In word and deed, may we remember those who are hungry and thirsty this day. Merciful God. Holy God, you have the words of eternal life. Lead us to trust more fully in Jesus Christ, the living word. Inspire pastors, teachers, and writers to nurture and encourage us in faith and understanding. We pray for our pastor, Stacy Christensen, and our bishops, Stacy Fiddler and Elizabeth Eaton. We pray for those who are in discernment and transition. Merciful God. God of new life, protect students and teachers in the new school year. Keep them safe. Bring an end to cycles of violence and to sh school shootings. Send the Holy Spirit to move us to do all that is necessary to ensure safe futures for all our children and grandchildren. Merciful God. God of mercy, we name before you aloud or in silence those who suffer in mind or body. Be with doctors, nurses, medical technicians, and first responders who offer care in every stage of injury and hearing. Merciful God. God, you claimed us in waters of baptism. Bless your faithful people as they stand before you today. We remember those whom we love who have fulfilled their baptismal journeys and now rest in you. Give us in time our portion with all the saints. Merciful God. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make it to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered in one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All are invited to this meal of grace. Come, for it is now ready. You may be seated.
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Karen Christ. Serve in the spirit. Thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. I'm going to have you be seated and stay through the prelude. We'll be back with you shortly.